A.P. Herbert wrote it, but he, he, di he didn't write it for me to do an imitation of Amy Johnson, which of course I did. Mm. I was in San Francisco, and I had Jim and Amy arrive in New York, and I rolled on the floor laughing, because she was so frightfully precise. She looked stuck. And she suddenly said, and I never thought that people would make such a fuss off me, and I went, oh, <laughs> and that's how it all came in the thing. This is the National Broadcast from London. Tonight we have a special surprise for you. Mrs. Gladys Potts is going to tell you about her magnificent flight. I won't say any more, but just introduce Gladys, Great Britain's best ambassadress. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what to say. It's all been so wonderful. The engine was wonderful. I suppose it is wonderful to be the first mother to fly to the North Pole with her baby. But I never thought that people would make such a fuss of me. I'm sure many of you mothers would have done the same. And I hope before very long that every British mother will be able to fly to the North Pole with her baby. The engine was wonderful. I hope none of you think I did it for the publicity. I just couldn't believe my eyes when I saw my name in the papers. I just had to do it. I thought I had to strike a blow for British motherhood and the British carburetor. The engine was wonderful. Lord Merridew's been ever so kind. Baby was fine. Of course, I used Merry Oil, lubricating oil. Excuse me, Mrs. Potter, we cannot have advertising. I'm, I'm so, so sorry. sorry. <clears throat> um... I suppose you'd like to know what it feels like to be over the North Pole, just a British mother alone with her baby. Of course, we couldn't see the North Pole. We were flying blind, the clouds and everything, but somehow I just knew we were there, and I got a sort of lump in my throat when I thought of Mother and England, and I held baby over the side, and I said, There, Tiddles. You'll be able to tell your children that you were the first baby to be sick over the Arctic Circle. Then I shut off my 365 horsepower Mary Watson engine. Oh, please, Mrs. Potts. Please. I'm sorry. Then I sent up a prayer to the old country. After that, we came back. The engine was wonderful. I hope, perhaps, my flight may lead to a regular mail service to the Pearl. There's nothing up there, of course. No conveniences of any description. No aerodromes, no nothing. But what I feel is this. If Great Britain doesn't do something, other countries will step in. Though, of course, none of them have got an engine, like my patent Meridue self-fertilizing carburetor. I have to cut you off, Mrs. Potts, if you will insist. I keep it. forgetting. Uh, about my plans... Baby and I have had a lot of offers, haven't we, Tiddles? I dare say we should write for the papers, because I want to do my bit in making British mothers air-minded. And next year we should do another flight. I don't think any mother has flown to Australia upside down yet, and Lord Meridue thinks that's a record that Great Britain ought to have. Anyhow, you can take it. I shall go on using British Mary Superfuel, the Mary Oil Lubricating Oil, the Mary Duke Carburetor, really and the Mary Mary Mother's Biplane, price £175. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>